Hey guys, welcome to Food Travels. I'm Chef Joe Seminari. You know, today we got a great show, starting with going to New York City at 6 a.m., heading over to Pret and tasting what I call a vegan breakfast, then walking over to our friends at Laconche Ranges, and if you've never seen these stoves, they're quite a sight. Then we're going to go to Green Apple, talk a little bit about some healthy bowls. We're going to be tasting some pasta with Alessandro. And we're going to be going to City Shack for a little bouillon base. So we got quite a day and a tasteful event. So uh, step inside and let's get eating. I don't know what it is, but you know, when I'm ready to dine or have some great food, I love to take the train. It sort of gives me time uh, to digest, talk about some of the food. So mass transportation is on the list for today's eating. I got here, there, it looks like avocado, hummus, quinoa, wrap, it's all vegan, and that's where you're gonna find really good vegan stuff in New York City. If you're looking to eat vegan, this is definitely the spot. The right amount of avocado here, which is important. I taste a lot of cilantro in there, which gives it a nice kick, balance. All the vegetables in here are cold and crispy, which is how they should be. Again, another look before it goes down the hatch. Mm. Here's Pret. And Pret has got this incredible dessert here. It's a mixture of non-dairy, it's, co it's basically coconut yogurt. Uh, my guess is that they're putting flax seeds in here in granola. They don't list it on the label. Uh, and of course they got some walnuts, um, which tastes like they're raw, which is another good thing. They're not roasted, they're not salted, they haven't been dipped in canola oil or anything like that. Let's see how this tastes. Yeah, I mean, there's all different kinds of granola and everything else. See that? Not bad. There's a little consistency problem here. I had this here last week, and it was a, a little sweeter than it is now. If you take a trip to the UK, you'll really taste some crazy combinations of food. They do it right, they do it safe. I always feel like over here, it's clean food. So New York City is the greatest melting pot when it comes to food. I mean, you can get just about anything you want, especially with these uh, food trucks that are all over the place. Now, there's a food truck named Mr. Cheese on the corner of 25th and Broadway. This guy has been a personal friend of mine for about the last 10 years. And when you're passing 23rd Street, don't forget to check out Italy if you want the best Italian food in the city. What a great market. You can get everything from shopping with prepared foods to cook for the night, to already incredible chef-crafted meals in one of these restaurants. It's truly a sight to see here in New York City if you haven't checked it out already. So I'm here in the city at La Conche and I made it all the way here to the favorite place of the world. These stoves are incredible. So in my early years of cooking on these stoves, I'm finally here at a piece of heaven. Check out these stoves. And I'm also here with Alisa. She is the queen oui. of the La Conche and she's gonna tell us a little bit about this wonderful product. We've been around for a long time, 1763 then closed during the French Revolution, wow. reopened in 1796 as a foundry. And um, these ranges have, are all handcrafted in the village of Lacanche because everybody says, what's Lacanche? I say, it's just a village. And um, we just are very proud of being able to share a little bit of French culinary culture when we make these ranges. They're all handcrafted, made to order in the village of Lacanche in France. It takes quite a while to get them, but the quality is definitely incomparable to 
many other brands, although whatever, everybody has to get what makes them happy. But this is um, definitely a piece of jewelry in your kitchen. Well, here's to the partnership with Elisa. Thank you Hi. so much. This is great place, Le Conche. City Crab Shack, NYC, Marta, how are you? It's a pleasure to meet you. So, you know, funny funny situation here. We happen to be filming down the road, and I'm smelling this place. I'm saying, wow, it's such a great aroma. It smells like Booyah Base. And out comes Marta. We got the best Booyah Base. Flagged us down, so we came here. And now we're going to taste. But before we get to tasting, so what makes this place so special? I mean, you guys obviously put a lot of work into the look of it. Yes, we did. What makes it special? I think our food makes it special. We have a chef with uh, like over 20 years with experience with the seafood. Wow. Yeah, we have our specialties like the bula base and uh, crab beignets, which are like the crab donuts. Like oh, really? Like the fried crab, smaller crab beignets. So this is like a hidden jewel, right? You got to kind of come down a little bit and hear this. It's only what, about maybe 70 seats? Yes, like 24. We have a back room for a private party. I like the whole decor and the place of it. So, Booyah Base is definitely the top seller here. Yes, what would you say that? Would you say that that's the destination people like will come in here for that? Yeah, it's like a sample of the seafood. You can have everything in it. You have a lobster. You have a clam. You have a calamari. You have um, a crab. Probably all rolled up into all one delicious. Up in a, one, in a little pan of tomato broth. It's really, really worth it to try. I'm starving. Now, I could be somewhat of a messy eater. I'm just going to let you know, it is especially really with messy, the... Actually. Okay, good. All right, let's taste the bouillabaisse. base. Bring it on. Yeah, I'll go and check. Good. Excellent. Voila. All yours. Because it's not exactly full. Wow. Wow. Mm. We have a snow crab. You got a little bit of calamari in here, yeah. and I love the the onions in this dish. It's really special flavor. Let's see how yeah, this. See, and you're definitely going to get dirty with this. Yeah, going down the hatch. Mm. That's incredible. Yep. You want the best <laughs> bouillon base in New York City? You're coming to the City Crab Shack. Don't forget it on 16th Street yep. and NYC. Lick it up. Next up, I'm heading to Green Apple in the Garmick District, 20 West 37th Street. Green Apple is committed to allowing people to eat fresh, delicious food for a price they can afford every day. I mean, you take a look at this buffet. Who has fresh steamed lobsters out on the buffet? Green Apple may have you covered with today's fast-paced, over-communicated lifestyle. Getting a quick bite to eat on the run is Green Apple. Aaron, you know, talking about making your own udon, I mean, stir fry, another another unique venue here, you know, where you can actually say, okay, I want that, 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 and that, or to make it quick, maybe you're on your lunch break, you just say, I want my favorite Asian pan grill or something like that, right? Absolutely. Talk to me a little bit about this venue, because okay. I'm getting hungry, so. This is something that's new to Green Apple, and we're introducing it. I mean, we are constantly thinking of new ways to improve it, but it is getting a great response, and like I said, nothing's better than to be able to come, pick something quick, or if you're a picky eater, choose your own toppings. Hey, Alessandro, how Welcome are you? Welcome, Joe. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. You know, I'm starving, and when I think of fresh pastas in New York City, Come to you, You're in the right place. I have a great so, couple of So we're going to eat today? Absolutely. What do you got? Some great stuff. I have uh, um, butternut squash gnocchi mm. with uh, uh, Interesting. sun dried tomatoes, parmesan cheese, butter, and sage sauce. Oh, that sounds delicious. Sweet and tasty. Excellent. Well, why don't we go and uh, taste some food? Right this way. <laughs> well, here it is the famous butternut gnocchi combination. Absolutely. This is uh, it's a great dish. Um, just brings up the sweetness of the uh, butternut squash. The squash is uh, first roasted uh, with uh, onions, carrots, and celery, and then it's uh, blended nice. to a nice puree. Uh, the gnocchi is a uh, homemade potato gnocchi, so it's nice and soft and not too heavy. And uh, it's topped with uh, Parmesan cheese and uh, crispy sun-dried tomatoes. And the sauce is added a little bit of uh, uh, butter and uh, sage just to give it a little more sweetness. This is incredible. You know, when I think about uh, a gnocchi and how they're supposed to 
taste. What I can't stand is like a heavy gnocchi falling Absolutely. apart. Absolutely. This, you can see, holds its shape perfectly. They're cooked perfectly, they're not raw in the center, and they really adhere to the sauce, which is another pet peeve of mine when people don't make thick enough sauce. You can see the sauce is really thick, coats the gnocchis perfectly. One other thing I want to talk about are these sun-dried tomato flakes here, which are really interesting. So then what's that all about? It just gives it a little bit more crispiness to, uh, to uh, the dish, and um, it also a little bit of color. Uh, to make it more interesting uh, on the flavor and also on the ice. And I like the sauce and the fact that this sauce actually adheres to the gnocchi, which is, a, which is a big thing too. It's not too thin, it's not too thick, but the flavors, this is definitely a winner. What do we got next? We have the uh, homemade or wheat fettuccine with the chestnut puree, sausage and mushrooms. Now this seems like a very interesting combination here. Looks, looks fabulous. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Absolutely. This is uh, uh, just an homemade uh, whole wheat fettuccine with uh, Italian sausage, uh, mushrooms. We use uh, shiitake mushrooms in this dish. Very nice. Well, it looks wonderful. I mean, all the sauces just coat the pasta, coat the protein really good. And I think that's important when you're talking about good pastas and you're talking about great sauces is that they need to be cooked down to a thick bubble consistency. This way, everything sort of kind of sticks together. Um, again, big fan on, on sauces that are cooked right. Let's go down the hatch with this one. Definitely a winner. Okay, so what we have here is the fusilli alla velinese. It's a, a homemade uh, fusilli pasta with a uh, uh, slow heat uh, meat ragu with uh, uh, dill and pork. And it's just cooked slow heat for about four hours. Really? That's the way to do it. You know, even when I cook my meat sauce, I put a whole ton of meats in there from area the ribeye, New York strips to stew, and I just stew that baby down. You know, any any kind of meat, as long as you cook it down four to six hours, Absolutely. you're good. Absolutely. You know? I will suggest you this with a little bit of parmesan cheese. Absolutely. Think, That's a know. must. And extra oil at the end. I extra like, oil will be which a I great noticed touch. that you've already you been put on. Touch. All right, let's enjoy. It. And the pasta here is a cavatelli. This is uh, fusilli, oh, which fusilli. is uh, also okay. a traditional pasta uh, from the Avellino region, from the Campania region, uh, exactly from Avellino. And the pasta in itself is made just with water, flour, and semolina. It's uh, uh, sort of like al dente, uh, it has a little different consistency. I was just going to say, to the two. Very exactly. good. And the cheese really marries nicely. Absolutely. Parmesan cheese always helps to blend the flavors together. This is great. Well, Elsa, thank, thank you. you for having me here. It's been a pleasure Absolute having you. Pleasure. I will see you again. We're here at Pizza Art in New York City. What makes this pizzeria different from any pizza establishment here in New York? The ingredients and the toppings are what makes this place unique. So let's step inside, taste some creations from the Neapolitan region of Italy. And now we have our, our first pizza called the Veracci. Now, what's really good about these types of pizza that comes out in Pizza Art is that you can see the crust is perfectly cooked. It's done in a brick oven with wood burning in the back, it should always give you that crispiness that you want on the bottom of the pizza. Now let's talk about the top of the pizza. Cheese is very important. Here they're using the best. Buffalo mozzarella, you can't get any better than that. And it's delicately, evenly spaced and melted on top. And the sauce. So I don't like too much sauce on the pizza where it kind of drips off with the cheese. This is the right amount of sauce and the color is good too, because you can see this light tomato, this red tomato sauce color, which is an indication that they're using either quality tomatoes or home tomatoes. You know, now to the taste test here. One thing I always love about pizza too is fresh basil. If you're putting fresh basil on a pizza, I love it. If you're putting dried oregano or dried basil, I'm not sure I like it that much. This pizza looks delicious. Down the hatch. Not bad, an incredible combination. This wine, which is a dry wine, goes perfect with the style of this pizza, and of course the buffalo mozzarella. One more bite, and I'm on to the next pizza. Now we have Pizza Art's Quattro Gusti, which they call it. Four different compartments of each different kind of flavors of pizza. Let's go over here to the smoked mozzarella, broccoli rabe, and sausage. A couple of different flavors here that I taste. One is quality sausages. Perfect combination. Even sausages these days can be fouled up. This sausage is incredible. The smoked flavor of the cheese really takes this slice of pizza to the next level. 
And no, you might think that there might be some bitterness coming from the broccoli rob. Not the case at all. The beautiful balance of flavors only complement the broccoli rob on this, not take away anything. Now we're gonna go next. This could be my favorite here, which is some mushrooms, truffles, speck, and a whole lot of fun. Mm, very good. And the last one is their parmigiano, eggplant, sliced delicately, and then you also have the shaved parmigiano cheese on that baby that you see, going right down and dirty. Well, it passes the eggplant test. And my eggplant test is that it's not saturated with oil when you bite into it. And the also eggplant test that I have, which is pet peeve, is that the eggplant is not bitter. This is not. So this pizza, Quattro Gusti, passes all of my tests. But I can't wait to go over to the stuffed calzone right now. So here's the stuffed calzone. I like the way they do it. They got a little twist going on here where they put a little bit of sauce and basil on the top, which you don't see much. This particular calzone is baked, although you can get it fried. Now, good calzone will always be crispy on the bottom. This one is. As you can see, they are not cheap with their meat. This one, is, this one has ham in there. And it's sliced ham, wonderful balance of cheeses in there. Uh, and they don't skip. Like, if you ever go to a pizzeria and then you eat this calzone, you're like searching for the ham. You're like, where's this piece of ham? Then you get a piece of ham on the corner, you get one maybe on the side. This, I guarantee you, every single bite has a piece of ham for you. Let's put the seasoning cheese to test. Because like many calzones, they get stuffed in unseasoned. If this fits the bill. This calzone is in a class of its own. Enough Parmesan cheese in here to make salt take a walk. Really good flavors. The dough here is incredible. It tastes a bit different than the pizza dough, which is good. You know, we don't want the same dough being made on everything. This looks good, tastes good. This is also a winner. Well, that's gonna conclude today's show, my friends. We've been in New York City, just got back. We visited with a lot of people and tasted a lot of great food. And let me tell you something, these dirty shirts can prove it with food stains all over it. Let's just recap our day. First, we went to Pret. I was looking for a vegan alternative breakfast and at Pret, I found it. Then from there, we visited the folks at La Conche. What do you think about those stoves and those ranges? Talk about art. Well, those stoves have been around for 300 years and they got it right. From there, we took a trip over to Green Apple, which some say has one of the most interesting buffets in New York City, and I have to agree. Then from there, we took a look and walked down the street to Alessandro, where he's making up some fresh pastas. Let's face it, when you want pasta, it doesn't take much to make it fresh, and the taste is so much better. With a little bit of flour, egg, and love, you can have dishes just like you've seen. Then it's cross town to Pizza Art, where we're tasting hand-tossed pizzas. And then last, we took a look at how bouillabaisse is made. In this city, for 2,000 years, bouillabaisse has been a staple on many of the menus from here all the way to Europe. And now you can have it in New York City. And that's going to wrap up this fun-filled episode today. Thank you for watching Food Travels. I'm your host, Chef Joe Simon. And remember, travel lightly and smooth, be safe, and eat along the way.